All right, so let us uh, derive consequences. So we, we have proved in general that if I have a self-adjoint linear operator, then uh, acting on a finite dimensional in product space, it has a basis of eigenvectors. So if I take a real symmetric matrix and construct the linear operator, which is corresponding to this real symmetric matrix, then it is a self-adjoint operator, and therefore uh, it has a basis of uh, mutually perpendicular unit vectors. And so uh, take the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues uh, for a real symmetric matrix are all real. And take the D to be the diagonal matrix, whose uh, diagonal entries are the eigenvalues counted with multiplicities. Uh, then there exists a n by n real orthogonal matrix S, so that S transpose AS is D. Okay. So if I if I have a orthogonal matrix, S transpose is inverse. So it says as S inverse AS is D, which means a is similar to the diagonal matrix D. Yeah. So a real symmetric matrix is similar to a diagonal matrix, and the matrix which diagonalizes it is this matrix S, whose column vectors are eigenvectors. Okay. So take the submission matrix. Uh, take uh, and so this is the this is just comes because I just take the linear operator induced by A, which is real symmetric matrix on R into R n. Apply the apply the spectral theorem on the self-adjoint operator and I have a basis of uh, eigenvectors of Rn and take the matrix S whose column vectors are these eigenvectors and then it will follow that as transpose AS is D. Okay. Similarly, I have N by N Hermitian matrix. Hermitian matrix has eigenvalues real and so I can make this diagonal matrix and apply the, uh, uh, self the uh, theorem about uh, diagonalization of self-adjoint operator so take TA, TA is from CN to CN, and it is self-adjoint because A is Hermitian. And so there is a basis of eigenvectors of CN, uh, eigenvectors in CN, these are eigenvectors of TA. Eigenvectors of TA are eigenvectors of A, okay? But uh, there's a orthonormal basis of CN. Orthonormal basis of CN uh, gives rise to a Hermitian matrix. I construct a matrix whose column vectors are the um, uh, the basis vectors in this orthonormal basis, then I get a uh, unitary matrix. A unitary matrix satisfies the property that U star U is identity. So U star is the inverse of U, and so therefore I will get U star A U is diagonal matrix. This is the spectral theorem for Hermitian matrices. This is the spectral theorem for real symmetric matrices. That there is a matrix S consisting of eigenvectors. Yeah, the column vectors are eigenvectors of A, so that this holds. And then if I have a Hermitian matrix, it says there is a orthogonal matrix. There's a unitary matrix U. Its column vectors are eigenvectors of A. Yeah, and U star AU is D. So A is similar to the diagonal matrix. Yeah, so I have already explained the proof that if I take a real symmetric matrix, uh, then take the self-adjoint operator, which is induced by A, then apply the spectral theorem for self-adjoint operator, then there exists a orthonormal basis of Rn, and this uh, orthonormal basis of Rn uh, will have the property that the matrix of Ta with respect to this basis is a diagonal matrix. This I have explained already. Yeah. So if I take E to be the standard basis, then the matrix of TA with respect to standard basis is A, but matrix of TA with respect to B is this formula. It is matrix of TA with respect to this basis E, and then the change of basis matrix. Yeah, this is the change of basis matrix. This is the inverse, and uh, so this is equal to P inverse AP. Okay, so A is equal to A is equal to uh, D equal to T inverse P inverse AP. Yeah, so what is the algorithm? for diagonalizing a self-adjoint matrix, right? So the algorithm comes from this fact that E lambda and E mu, two distinct diagonal spaces intersect in zero and they are mutually perpendicular, yeah? So so um, if, if I have a self-adjoint matrix which is real, okay, that means it's a real symmetric matrix, then there is a matrix P, which is orthogonal matrix, and P transpose AP is diagonal matrix. So first find out distinct eigenvalues of A, look at the characteristic polynomial, look at the characteristic polynomial, Xi minus A, find out all the roots, 
and suppose mu1 mu k are the roots of these this uh, polynomial we know that uh, because the matrix is self adjoint the roots are real mu1 mu k they are real roots yeah and then uh, look at the eigen space construct the eigen space uh, take take an eigen value mu and construct the eigen space eigen space simply consist of all vectors so that av equal to mu v okay but av equal to mu v means a minus i uh, a minus i times mu uh, v equal to 0 so all the uh, vectors in the eigen space they are solutions of a homogeneous system of linear equations whose coefficient matrix is a minus i mu okay so a minus i mu is the coefficient matrix and i have to solve this homogeneous system uh, linear equation so apply gauss elimination this is the null space the eigen space is the null space of the matrix a minus mu i and null space can be constructed okay from gauss elimination method we can find a basis using gauss elimination okay so and then once we have a basis of the null space of a minus mu i which is the eigen space i can apply gram schmidt process and construct a orthonormal basis yeah so so each eigen space i can construct i can apply gram schmidt process um, and construct a uh, orthonormal basis and the eigen spaces add up to the whole space yeah and they are mutually perpendicular so if i take a basis of each one of them and take the union it will create a basis of the whole space yeah so 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 once i have uh, suppose this um, uh, e mu 1 has dimension d1 e mu 2 has dimension d2 and e mu k has dimension dk there some uh, some is equal to dimension of the whole space yeah so uh, uh, so take take a construct a matrix whose first d1 columns are the vectors in taken from v mu 1 a orthonormal basis in uh, v mu 1 then the next uh, set of uh, vectors okay so i am constructing a matrix so first first d d1 columns they are coming from e mu 1 then next d2 columns they are coming from e mu 2 but these column vectors are uh, coming from an orthonormal basis of e mu 1 next d2 columns are coming from orthonormal basis of mu 2 e mu 2 and so on so that is my matrix whose column vectors are eigen vectors of uh, a self adjoint matrix once the column vectors are eigen vectors then uh, the matrix u satisfies the property that au is this diagonal it is it is equal to it is equal to au1 au2 these are the column vectors of au but au1 is equal to lambda1 i mean it is mu1 u1 mu2 u2 etc but this is same as this is same as u times diagonal matrix whose diagonal entries are mu1 up to mu n and this says that u star au is the diagonal matrix okay yeah so so that's how we diagonalize a self adjoint matrix okay let us look at an example let us look at this matrix yeah you see this is a real symmetric matrix this is same as this this is same as this and this is same as this so this is a 3 by 3 real symmetric matrix and uh, we know that all the eigen values are going to be real yeah all the eigen values are going to be real and eigen vectors which are living inside distinct eigen spaces are mutually perpendicular so let us see what is the so first find out the eigen values so to find eigen values i have to solve this uh, equation this is the characteristic polynomial we have to find the roots of the characteristic polynomial and you can uh, substitute the given 3 by 3 matrix and get a cubic polynomial and a, a matrix is given in such a way that you can easily solve the cubic polynomial roots of the cubic polynomial and the roots turn out to be 3 3 minus 3 okay so there are two eigen spaces one corresponding to eigen value 3 another corresponding to eigen value minus 3 there are two eigen spaces yeah and these are eigen spaces of a real symmetric matrix and so we know that their sum has to uh, this is a diagonalizable matrix and diagonalizable matrix says that algebraic and geometric multiplicity of eigen values are all equal so 
the the eigenvalue three has algebraic multiplicity two, and therefore its geometric multiplicity will be also two. So E three will be two dimensional. This this dimension is two, and this is the geometric algebraic multiplicity of minus three is one. So E minus three is going to be going to be one dimensional. Yeah, this is going to be one dimensional, and so the, their sum is the dimension. It is the order of the matrix. Yeah. So eigenvectors for lambda equal to three. They are in. They are constituting the null space of a minus three i. Yeah. So the uh, null space of a minus three i is is solved by looking at um, in the in uh, construct a minus three i. This is a minus three i, and we have to find uh, vectors in the null space. So you have to find a minus three i times x y z equal to zero. This system of linear equations, uh, you know, you can see the matrix. Yeah. You can see the matrix. The first row and second row. Second row is minus one times first row, and the third row is repeated. So rank is uh, the the uh, the rank of this matrix is two. Rank of a minus three i, sorry, rank of a minus three i is just one. So therefore, the nullity nullity will be equal to two. So this null space is two dimensional. Yeah. So we get single equation. Minus 2x plus 2y minus 2z equal to zero. That is same as x minus y plus z equal to zero. So the null space consists of all the vectors which satisfy this equation. But this is equation of a plane passing through origin and which is perpendicular to the vector 1 minus 1 1. Okay. So all vectors which are perpendicular to this vector, they are set going to satisfy this equation. Okay. So uh, so therefore. Uh, the uh, the the matrix the matrix it looks like one minus one one and x y z equal to zero. Okay, so these are the this is already in row echelon form. So these are the two free variables and this is the pivot. Okay, so there are two degrees of freedom. Uh, y and z are arbitrary and x is equal to y minus z and therefore uh, this is the Uh, the vector space V3 is linear span of these two vectors. Okay, they are they are uh, linearly independent, and I can apply a Gramscian process to find the orthonormal basis of V3. I am given two vectors which are perpendicular. I mean, which are which are uh, linearly independent. Uh, then uh, I I take the second vector, and from the second vector I subtract the projection of it along the first vector. Then I will get a vector which is perpendicular to the first vector. That is the Gramscian process, and so we can find out a basis of V3 by using Gramscian process. And this is these two vectors; they are orthonormal basis of V3. And similarly, uh, uh, this is uh, the orthonormal basis of V minus three. This is one-dimensional, so we just take a one vector in this and divide by its length. And so I have two vectors in V3. And one vector is v minus three. I take the union that is a orthonormal basis of R three consists of eigenvectors, and eigenvalues are three, three minus three. And therefore, if I make a matrix S whose column vectors are these eigenvectors, then eigenvalues are three, three minus three. Then S transpose S is equal to D. So I have diagonalized the given matrix, real symmetric matrix S. Yeah. The, the diagonalizing matrix is always the matrix of eigenvectors. The column vectors of S are going to be eigenvectors, and the equation is S transpose S is D because S transpose is the inverse of S. S is a orthogonal matrix, so its inverse is S transpose. Very easy to find inverse of orthogonal matrix. Simply take the transpose. So this is the this is the uh, diagonalization of a real symmetric matrix. Okay. Yeah, so let's. Uh, uh, so we have proved the spectral theorem now for all self-adjoint operators and uh, real symmetric matrices and Hermitian matrices. They are they are special cases. So we have proved the spectral theorem for both real symmetric matrices and Hermitian matrices that these matrices have a uh, eigen a basis of eigenvectors. Uh, which are unit vectors and mutually perpendicular. Okay, now I want to uh, show that there is a bigger spectral theorem which applies to all normal matrices. And I, as I have explained, the class of normal matrices is much bigger. It includes 
even the skew symmetric matrices. Yeah, the spectral theorem which I proved for symmetric matrices will not apply to skew symmetric matrices. But skew symmetric matrices are normal. Uh, skew Hermitian matrices are also normal. Hermitian matrices are normal. Then orthogonal matrices are normal. Then uh, unitary matrices are normal. So it's a very big class. So we would like to prove the uh, same theorem for normal matrices. Yeah, and uh, to do this, we have to uh, go through a route that we will uh, simplify the given normal matrix as a sum of Hermitian matrices. Yeah, two Hermitian matrices will decompose a normal matrix as a sum of two Hermitian matrices which commute with each other. Okay, and then we apply the spectral theorem for Hermitian matrices and uh, prove the theorem for normal matrices. Okay, so we will uh, we will be confronted with uh, with uh, operators which are commuting or matrices which commute with each other. A normal matrix is defined by that property. A matrix is normal if A star commutes with A. Okay, so we have to understand what is the connection between the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of two operators which commute with itself, the, themselves. So take a n-dimensional complex inner product space and suppose I have two commuting self-adjoint operators. Okay, two commuting self-adjoint operators. So A and B is equal to B A. Yeah, then there exists a orthonormal basis. So each one is self-adjoint operator. So for each one, I have an eigenbasis of V, but this theorem says that there is a common basis of eigenvectors of A and B. Yeah, A has, and separately, each one of them, we can apply the uh, spectral theorem for self-adjoint operators and get a basis of eigenvectors. But this says that if A and B commute, there is a common set of eigenvectors which constitute a basis of V. Okay, that is the theorem. That commuting self-adjoint operators have a common orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. Okay, yeah. So let us let us show that. So so each one has eigenspaces. Suppose V1, V R are eigenspaces of A. And the eigenvalues are mu1, mu r, which are distinct. So A and B are commuting self adjoint operator. I pick up the eigenvalues of A and then construct the eigenspaces. V1 to Vr are eigenspaces of the distinct eigenvalues, which are all real. Okay, these are all real because I have a self adjoint operator. Okay. So now take V in in the in the eigenspace Vr. There are distinct eigenspaces. They are mutually perpendicular because A is self-adjoint and they intersect in only zero vector. Okay, so take V belong to VI. Then I want to claim that B, V is also in VI. Okay, we have seen this phenomenon before. Okay, so uh, uh, I have this operator A on V. And then V splits, V splits into eigenspaces. E lambda one, E lambda, I mean E mu one, E mu two, etc. Okay, and the whole space is the union of these. It is the linear span of all these eigenspaces. Okay, now I have this another operator B from V to V. What this says is that when I when I operate B on vectors in this eigenspace, I don't go out. I again land up in the same eigenspace. So if I apply uh, vectors, uh, if I apply B on any eigenspace, then I will land up. The image will be again in this eigenspace for all I. That is what we, we let us prove that, that if I take a eigenvector with eigenvalue mu I, then the image of that eigenvector will be again land inside the same eigenspace. We say the eigenspace is invariant with respect to B. VI is mapped into itself under the action of B if B is commuting with A. Okay, so let us see that, that BV is again in VI. So apply A, VI is the eigenspace of the operator A so to see that BV is in VI, I have to operate A on BV okay, and see what happens. So A operating on BV, but AB is AB, this is AB, AB is BA. 
So this is BA times V and this is B of AV. But AV is mu I V because V is eigenvector in the eigenspace EI, VI. Okay. So B of mu I V, but B is a linear map. So mu I comes out and it is BV. Okay. Yeah. So A operating on BV is a multiple of BV. It's a multiple of BV, right? So BV is in the eigenspace of A because what is eigenspace of A? It consists of all vectors which are mapped to mu i times the same vector. So BV has this property that A operating on BV is mu i times BV. So BV lies in the eigenspace BI. Okay. So so therefore I can restrict B to VI. This is also a self-adjoint operator. Okay, this is also a self-adjoint operator. So, so therefore, uh, each VI has a orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of B. This, this is a self-adjoint operator on this subspace VI, which is the ith eigenspace of A, and uh, I can construct a orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of B inside VI. Right. So, VI has a orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of B. And all these eigen, uh, vectors are already eigenvectors of A because they are lying, lying inside VI. So VI has a uh, basis of eigenvectors, but those eigenvectors are inside VI, and therefore they are also eigenvectors of A. Okay, so that that proves the theorem. Yeah, that is the proof of the theorem that there is a common basis of eigenvectors because now. Uh, in in VI, in VI I construct the orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of B for each VI. Okay, and then take the union. That union is the common set of eigenvectors of A as well as B. Yeah, so I'll, I'll repeat. So I have I have two operators which are self-adjoint and they commute with each other. I want to construct a common set of eigenvectors of both these operators. So I start with any of the operators. Let us say we start with A. Then A has certain number of eigenspaces. Okay, A has certain number of eigenspaces. These eigenspaces are mutually perpendicular. They intersect only in the zero vector. And I take the operator B, and I showed you that B, when it is applied to vectors inside mm -hmm. VI, we are mapped inside VI. So B restricts to a self-adjoint operator on VI. Okay, yeah. So so therefore, uh, B is self-adjoint operator acting on VI. So VI has a eigenbasis, a basis of eigenvectors of B. But those eigenvectors are already eigenvectors of A. So for each VI, I can construct a orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of B, and then take the union. That union is the common set of eigenvectors of A and B. Okay. Yeah. 